has been a long journey. Um, but the longest journey has been for the families mostly impacted by this collapse. Um, long time coming to, to get Quinyon Wimberly out, out of the building. It was an intolerable wait. The next will be recovering Jose so that we can turn Jose uh, over to his family as well. Uh, the city of New Orleans has pushed for every step of the way. Accountability as it relates to the fall and the collapse of this development. From day one, our chief of fire, Chief McConnell, has been my lead on this. Chief, come on up. And we'll give you just a little bit more information and really just go to questions that you may have at this time. Um, it's a very difficult time, but it is a, a good day, I would say, for Miss Irene and the entire Wimberley family. Chief. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, as the mayor said, it certainly is uh, with uh, mixed emotions, uh, obviously helping to give the uh, Wembley family some more closure uh, in this process. Um, it is a, uh, we know Quinn, you know, our faith and the family's faith tells us he's been out for a long time, but getting uh, them the remains and getting that closure was very significant for them. And it's just a step in the process. And as the mayor said, getting uh, uh, Mr. Ponce's family the same closure is important. Uh, the men and women of uh, the fire department, the USAR team, did a fantastic job. Uh, they, they did this. It took a lot of planning. They were, you know, this morning they tell me we were lucky. There was no luck in this. They, they worked very hard to uh, make sure that this was done in a very precise way to make sure we got uh, all of his remains. We are certain that we did that. Uh, they uh, got, as you saw, this process play out, scraping the floors off floor by floor. Uh, so the men and women of, of uh, the USAR team, which is not just the fire department, there's uh, New Orleans EMS, and when we go on deployment to police uh, and, and other departments, uh, were, were fantastic throughout this, did it very professional, did it very respectful, and I want to thank the contractor because his folks have been here boots on the ground and uh, have worked uh, to help get it done, and it, and it got done finally uh, way too long, a period of time, but uh, just very grateful that it's done, and immediately we are starting on the, the next steps to get Mr. Ponce out, and before you ask <laughs> that we're not giving any timeline on it, it is going to be as difficult as this was, it is going to be probably way more difficult and complex because of uh, where he's located in that pile on the Rampart Street side, but uh, that work starts immediately. With that, we'll take just a couple of questions. Yes, ma'am. What kind of question is that? What kind of question is that? What makes me, what kind of question is that? No, seriously, what kind of question is that? Absolutely, that's what, I mean. They are, they have one, definitely a part of the fabric of the city of New Orleans, the family is. But clearly the relationship has grown significantly between the chief and I and the Wimberly family. Every week we meet with the family. Every Thursday at 11.30. Pre-COVID, it was in, it was formal, meaning uh, personal, uh, in my office. Um, going through COVID, it has been a conference call. 
but every week. When we started the mission to recover the remains, it grew to every day. Because the situation has remained so fluid, we wanted to ensure the family that they were being uh, kept you know, informed every step of the way so that we can do our best to prepare them for what the situation would be. Even today, and even yesterday, we thought that we would get closer to him, and we did get closer to him, but we anticipated uh, his recovery on yesterday. Yesterday evening, then that grew to this morning, potentially around noon. The chief was in constant contact with me throughout the morning. And of course, me being in contact with the family. We got here, of course. We moved the family in and on site days prior to today. And they will remain in the hotel tonight as well. I cannot put words, words really cannot even describe um, what it felt like to see the bucket come down. See, I'm, my family is right here as well. Um, and then receive his remains and go to the coroner's office, setting it up to where reverence every step of the way so that the family could surround themselves, surround, come together, uh, surrounding the remains of, 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 of Quinn. That was then led in prayer by Father Weiss and using scripture. And then a family prayer led by Reverend Minnie, a niece to the family. Also following prayer was song that we join the family in, of course. But words cannot really explain or describe um, not only the pain, but also closure that they've been wanting for 10 months. And as Ms. Wimberly told me last night, you know, there's nothing like a mother's love. But even in ways that I'm a mother, but that, that I can or haven't even experienced just yet. And of course, the loss of your child. So, um, I don't know if I'm giving you what you want. I'm just giving it to you how it is. Um, but this has always been about safety and the families being first and that of um, the tragedy that was caused. And it's unfortunate. And, um, and we'll be with the family, literally, because now it's the next step. One, getting closure that they need, the grieving that will go on, but the justice that we all seek um, as it relates to this tragedy. So that's where the shift is right now. Clearly the shift is there. And I expressed to Dale, Frank, who's the brother, that we're gonna be with them, you know? And, and today and, and actually tomorrow, accused body will go for a full or top, an autopsy. Uh, then we'll go to Baton Rouge for a thorough forensic investigation. That could take up to two months, I'm told, and we're preparing the family for that. But it's necessary because we want to fully document, fully document the pain and harm that was caused that rendered death. And therefore, that will be needed to seek the justice that we're all are pushing for, for this family, for this community, for the city. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is something that we're all going through, right? And it's new for all of us. It's an experience. And I know that. I know that. And I want you to know from me, you know, as well. I appreciate you. Chief, um, along the lines of it being new for you, and any new firefighter, rookie firefighter, is sort of pretty accustomed to dealing with family with tragedy, I'm sure you did some time ago, but you don't anticipate 10 months of this. I'm wondering what kind of a weight it's been on you and I'm on the fire department. People around you with constant concern and pressure that you've reached this day. 
It is. It's hard, and they've been, uh, you know, particularly the folks that are out here. I have uh, several members of, of our department that have been here every single day since the start. They were here that morning, and they're here every morning, you know, before 6 o'clock for their safety brief and starts at 6. So, uh, it certainly, I haven't uh, had a chance to talk to uh, the leader of that team, uh, Captain Danny Simon, other than on the phone, you know, because I was going with the family over to the coroner's office, but I'm going to go in and talk to them. But I know it's got to be uh, emotional for them, too, as it is for me and for everyone. Uh, it's certainly a first step in closure, but they also recognize, and it, he said to me, you know, we're ready to go get Jose. That's the next step. Last so they're, they're very focused on what they do, and they're very professional. Steve, you talked about, pardon me, Mr. Mayor, you talked about pivoting toward justice want to see criminal charges against the people who built that uh, and where would you know and what is the status of that and is it a state or a federal investigation into the criminal act? Well as you know in terms of there it is an investigation uh, absolutely as it relates to the federal at the federal level uh, OSHA you know has been involved uh, OSHA has rendered uh, its report but the full extent of the report, uh, we're still waiting on that. Um, as you know, that it is in uh, in a part of the judicial system right now, and it will continue to move through that process that the city of New Orleans has no direct authority no, nor control over. You want to see criminal charges? I want to see justice for the families as it relates to this tragedy that they experienced and, of course, that, that this city has experienced. Thank, Thank you all so much.